Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and I was paused there for a moment to make sure everything was working just fine. I'm doing a second live stream tonight. The first live stream, of course, was in the other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Perillo, and we had about 350 people tune in live to watch me unbox this, an essential phone. It is essential, because that's the name of it. It's an essential, it's the essential phone, essential. They send it to me to review. So I'm going to be uh, taking a look at it over the course of the next little while. Uh, just unbox it. You can watch that and uh, hear me answer questions about it uh, at youtube.com slash Chris Perillo. Uh, you, of course, have tuned in live here, so you are very well aware that we do TLDR every day here in this channel. Turn on notifications, tap that bell, be a part of the notification squad. It's easy to do. It's also free. So is a thumbs up. So is a like. That's, that's free. Completely free. Uh, another thing that's free uh, you can become a sub of mine on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo. You can become a sub for free. And I know you're thinking, well, Chris, I thought it was $5 to sub to you. Well, it is. But if you have your Amazon Prime account connected to your uh, Twitch account, you get one free sub a month. And so I could be your free sub. And then you sub to me. You get access to the Discord chat. You can hang out with us 24-7 and geek out, uh, you know, beyond these uh, live video productions. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Be a sub of mine on Twitch. Another way of joining the Discord chat is easy to do. Become a patron of mine. That way you can not only get a part of uh, be a part of Discord, but you'll also get this TLDR, this video, as an audio podcast. Only patrons get that value. So just FYI. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'll be taking questions not just from uh, the, the live YouTube video chat, but also Discord, which is currently behind me. Uh, I'm also taking super chat messages. If you want your question or comment or whatever to rise to the top, you press the little super chat button. It's easy to do. It's the, uh, the button that has the dollar sign in the middle of it, but apparently only certain countries can do it and you can't do it on iOS. So it's kind of limited, but really who uses iOS anymore? Anybody? Anybody? We did have a question that came into chat, which uh, I, I believe uh, is someone who's new to Discord, asking about the Note 8 or the iPhone 8. Uh, they seem to be tossed up between the two. I don't have an answer to the question, but man, if I hear one more person say, Chris, you got to check out the Note 8. Just one more person, I'm going to do it. I, I, I do plan on getting the Note 8 uh, on a review uh, unit uh, basis, uh, but I, I don't know when, where, how. I am actively working on it. Everyone seems to be... Every, and when I say everyone, I mean... It gets brought up as a topic of conversation every day. I was going in to get some coffee today to the coffee shop, and they asked me, would you like that with a Note 8? And I said, no, thank you. It's, it's systemic, this problem. Uh, can't believe it. Uh, so I, I do want to, I do want to try it just FYI, but yeah, the note eight is, is something that people have been recommending that I, I look at. Uh, I will be, you know, brutally honest and that's probably going to offend a few fans. Um, you know, especially when I talk about the software experience in general, it's not so much the modification that, uh, you know, Samsung lays atop Android. It's how does it work? How, how is it fluid? Is it clean? Does it, does it impede uh, my general experience? Does it make it better? Does it make it worse? I don't know. I don't have an answer to those questions right now. So I can't answer whether or not you should go with the Note 8 or the uh, the iPhone 8. I can tell you this, uh, the, 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 the essential is, is a clean experience. Software-wise, you know, as far as Android's concerned, I feel there's far less uh, frame droppage and, and, and jank on uh, an essential phone than there is on uh, on an iPhone. There is a little bit, like as I rotate, and it could be because of the the resolution that I chose here. Uh, there is some frame skippage, but not like a massive amount necessarily. But uh, I, like I said, I've been I've been tweaking. I've been de dealing. I, I've been uh, playing with the display, changing the display size uh, from default to uh, to small and also uh, tweaking the font size as well I, I like I like that kind of a, a screen experience let's see if I if I change the eh, maybe it changed a tiny bit but not by much so I'm still tweaking the phone still tweaking uh, Diogo Ferreira asks I apologize for the last name slaughter do you think the future of phone displays is this kind of infinity display I, I don't know sure I think the future of phone displays is what you see on my face glasses it's all lenses is like right there. Um, you know, even Tim Cook today said that uh, AR is not ready for Apple's vision of AR, so to speak, on these wearable frames. That's where it needs to be. That's where screens are going to go. We're going to get away from these types of devices, these these slabs of, of you know, elements, and, and into something that's a, a far more uh, natural fit. Uh, Pez Liz starts the first super chat of the evening. 
Let's start a Note 8 fund. Dude, I still haven't funded my pixels. I How am I going to fund my pixels? I, you know, I, I, I keep trying. It's it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a while. Blood, sweat, and tears. That why is Chris doing so much content every day? Why is he doing a regular video in the Chris Perillo channel? Why is he doing a live video every day? Why is he simulcasting the podcast recording on his Twitch account every time or just about every time? Uh, <laughs> I I gotta I gotta work off uh, you know some uh, some uh, um, how shall we say this uh, some collectibles? No, pixels aren't collectible. These are collectible. The minifigures here. This this action figure is also uh, also collectible. I guess there is a hashtag though for people who belong in the in the the camp of Pixel Team Pixel hashtag Team Pixel is that right? I may have to start using that. Mm, may have to start using it. Colton Matthew comes in with his fire emoji. Chris, does Android Oreo offer a better experience than iOS 11? So I would have to compare or go back to the video I recorded. Uh, iOS 11 versus Android Oreo, the, the Nexus 6P experience with, versus the iPhone, was it the 8 Plus that I went with in that compara uh, comparison, the iPhone 8 Plus? Uh, go back there and uh, watch that video. That'll give you the answer to the question. I, 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 uh, I hesitate to kind of recap it in a, in a simple answer. Uh, Adam Bravman uh, in, uh, in chat says, Chris, don't try the Note 8. It's jank city. Not worth the time. See, now I appreciate that, Adam. See, Adam, I may trust. If I if I see there's jank on the Note 8, I'm just gonna be like, hey, yo, there's there's jank here. Uh, not into it. That that was something for Android like 4.4, right? Was that Kit Kat? Uh, o Okri asks, hi Chris, how would you rate the LG B30 software experience out of 10 and why? Oh boy, I don't know. Um, in terms of general design, I'd give it an eight. In terms of performance, I'd give it. I'd give it an eight. Um, my concern is I can't modify it too much. Yeah, you know, my concern is it's not likely going to see a lot of updates. That to me, I'd give a five, in terms of, of the updates that may get pushed to it. Software updates, software improvements. That's a bigger concern of mine, uh, and seemingly a concern of a lot of OEMs uh, that you know hopefully will be freed to do that on an ongoing basis, as many of them have already uh, you know, abstracted you know, certain services and, and apps to the, the Google Play Store for faster updates rather than o OTA. Uh, Yasser comes in with the next super chat, Pixel Fund, hashtag Team Pixel. Sorry not to take away from hashtag Team Note, but I'm here and there's jank. I, I'm a, I, I, I like living without jank, and quite honestly, one of the, the biggest reasons I'm looking beyond iOS is I'm tired of the iOS jank. Tired of it. Tired. Kit Kat uh, says Nikoi channel. Uh, Kit Kat one. I'm sorry. Kit Kat was actually one of Android's best releases for performance. Was that the one with Project Butter? It's been a while. I, I can't say that I saw that much of a difference, though. Honestly, um, we'll see what happens. I think the Pixel is going to set the standard for a lot of that, uh, but we'll see. Jay Hockey here in Discord says I noticed no jank, but I don't have your eyes, so I'm used to the old jank. It's possible, you know, you grow accustomed to it. It's like I'm used to iOS's jank. I know it's it's going to happen. So when I jump from using like iOS for a day, even like an app, it, for you know for a little while, and then switch over to, to the Android equivalent, even on the Nexus 6P, and find it a far more fluid and, and responsive experience, it just makes you kind of wonder. The software, seemingly the same software, works better on Android than than it does on iOS. In, in in so many ways, so yeah, I, I I I it's smoother like animations, not not perfect. I don't think I can have a jank free experience, but at least I know I can report the jank. And with essential, I know they they likely take care of it if they if they could re reproduce. And, and even uh, Pixel, uh, even Google could potentially uh, reproduce if I found something and uh, and I reported it. Uh, Bill Fowler comes in with a super chat says, "Don't get the Note 8 if you want a smooth software experience." Okay, so I'm going to count you on Team Pixel then. Team Pixel, Bill Fowler, thank you for helping make the Pixels possible. I really appreciate it. Uh, Christian Daw comments and says, iOS 11 equals Windows Vista. Yeah, I want... Okay, when I say it's Windows Vista, I'm talking about more of how I feel. There's this gut reaction to this, this visceral, you know, uh, rebuking of everything in front of me. That When I say Windows Vista, I don't mean it has the same problems as Windows Vista. Exactly. It's just my Windows Vista. And it's been that way since iOS 7, quite honestly. What took me so long? I've been waiting for them to make a Pixel 2 and an Essential, I guess. I like the fact that the Essential's got a clean experience. 
Can't wait to, to play with it. Can't wait to tweak it. Uh, Jamar D says, The Pixel was the first and only Android phone that I've ever owned that performs the same as the day I bought it. That is telling. Given that, given that it's a year old... See, so when it comes to me in phones, if it's if it's my phone, like, you know, I, that's my phone. Um, you know, with the iPhone, I, I'd upgrade it every year because incrementally it got better. I got a, I got a better camera. It got maybe a little faster. It, you know, I had this feature, that feature, whatever. Uh, and the camera really is what drove the upgrade cycle for me. And now, you know, that I see, uh, the, you know, the Pixel, I, I may be a, you know, a perfunctory Pixel updater too. You know, you, you're, are you going to get the new Pixel? You don't even ask. Like, it may very well, if I like the Pixel 2 or the 2XL, whichever one that I, I like, if I like one more, I don't know. Uh, I may like them both for different reasons. Uh, you know, I think that uh, I will, uh, you know, eventually, uh, um, you know, float that way and, and, and go and upgrade the Pixel every year. So if I can get through a year without a de decrease in performance, uh, that says everything to me. Uh, so thank you for, for that little bit of, of, of feedback. CC more 74 and Discord's leaning towards the Pixel. Yas says Pixel XL for now, iPhone 7 Plus for work. Uh, yeah, so we, we will see. Pixel XL flies, the smoothest phone I've ever used. I don't know, the Essential's pretty, this is, this is a bit more smooth than the, uh, the Nexus has been for me. VT Productions PC does a super chat. Uh, he's also known as Mario. Got to know him by his name. He, he's a, a longtime supporter of mine, and I appreciate it. I uh, see him on a regular basis here in the TLDR broadcast. So I assume you press the notification button there, Mario. Note 8 fund. Oh, that's gotta go to a Note 8, really? Fine. Sorry, small super chat. Car service took my money this week. Darn breaks, lol. How's the essential? Is it any good? I've been happy with notes. Um, what's that? Is that is that the pixel right there? I think that is. I think that looks like the pixel launcher there. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's clean, and that's you know, I'm a software guy, and I, I keep having to pound that into people's heads. Even in the live stream that we did with the unboxing of the essential, I I was answering hardware questions. I'm like, man, really? You're gonna ask me about this? You could Google that, right? Tell you know, ask me a question that you're asking for you know, a software type of experience that, that is you know immersive for me. The the things that I see in software. You know, I'm not going to slag Samsung for the features that it packs into its phone. I, I would slag any company that would do that at the cost of software performance. Any software performance degradation goes too far, no matter what the feature is. This is what drove me screaming uh, away from uh, iOS. David Crandall comes in with a super chat. Aside from tweaking the screen, have you found any other tweaks that improve your Android experience? Uh, now, when you say tweaking the screen... Uh, the, what what I, what I was doing was effectively changing resolution and, and font size to try to find something that that I like. And I, I actually, uh, you know, even though I, I I'm nearsighted, uh, I really like uh, being able to uh, you know cram a lot of data on the screen at one time. So I tend to throw my uh, the d display size down to uh, default, and then I have to go and tweak uh, widgets and what have you. Um, it, but that it, it didn't it didn't seem to decrease performance really at all. I don't know if it increased performance necessarily, but I can get a lot more information on the screen at any one time. Uh, granted, I, I may not be able to see things as easily, but uh, I'll, I'll keep messing with it. Um, in terms of any other features, they really don't pack a lot of changes uh, into Android. Essential hasn't. Uh, not that I've seen, David. Not outright. Uh, we do have a few questions, and thank you for uh, 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 pacing that. Uh, Tony, if you're in Discord, uh, feel free to, to ask again. Question 518. With AI and machine learning becoming more powerful than ever, it reminds me of a show called Black Mirror. An episode uh, was called, uh, with AI had become powerful enough, I don't know what it was called, uh, powerful enough to collect the data on a person from his or her social feeds and videos to create an AI bot of that person or his or her personality. If that were possible in the future, do you see a, a possible Steve Jobs AI come to life? That would be wild. Oh man, that would be cool. It could happen. I'm not going to say no. Technology is an amazing thing. Not as a destination, but as an enabler. I think that's I, I think that would be uh, uh, amazing to see. You know, think about it. All we are is software. We got this brain, right? We got we got the hardware, but it's the software that makes us run, right? The the software and the hardware are working together. We got this wetware in our skull. Uh, that to me um, is it's it's inevitable, and I wouldn't say it's a singularity, but you know, our consciousness, you know, it could effectively be transcoded. We could effectively live forever in light. If we don't already, and we don't know it yet, you know, we're, we're maybe not made to understand everything about our uh, condition. Uh, question 521, has your iPad ever left your desk? Ah, 
Thank you. Uh, you know, do you use it to read the web, the comic books? If if not, isn't a phone or laptop more than sufficient? Is a tablet still worth a thousand dollars for the added convenience? Um, honestly, I was planning on typing on it more, writing on it more, and then ultimately I didn't. Uh, I I just assume sometimes grab my my notebook computer that I'm sorry, another notebook computer, uh, the the MacBook if I'm going to do something because I can better monitor things on the web and and, and do other things. Uh, but uh. The iPad honestly doesn't leave the, the, the desk all that often. It, it, as much as I, I would I, I imagine it should and could, uh, I, I don't travel all that often, um, and, and I haven't had that use case for it. I'd imagine the Pixelbook might a little more because maybe I'll view it more as a, a laptop rather than as a tablet. Uh, and even though the keyboard is, is sufficient on the iPad Pro that I have, you know, I may only need to browse the web, may only want to browse the web, uh, and, and, and maybe want a, a slightly larger screen that, you know, looks nice, that responds well. The thing that really keeps me from using that iPad more than I normally would is the performance of iOS on it. KidFlash177 asks, uh, Chris, how do you think Android can improve their software? Performance, 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 performance. Period. End of story. Uh, what Google's doing, I think, is going the right direction with it. Question 521 from Tony. Which Star Wars movies uh, will you be rewatching before watching The Last Jedi? Uh, probably all of them. I, I think uh, I, uh, I, I'm i not going into a double header, uh, but uh, we're, I'm going to watch it with Slav opening night, um, and I, uh, I, I we're going to watch it in 2D. Not long after, I, I may have to find friends to go with uh, to, to watch it in 3D, because I want to see it in 3D, certainly. But I, I, I think uh, watching The Force Awakens would be sufficient uh, you know, right before uh, seeing the movie, I think back to back they should work well from everything that uh, I understand at least. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's my belief. Diogo Ferreira, uh, Fer Ferreira, Ferreira, man, I'm really bad with names. Uh, what do you think about the coming back of Nokia and Android? Greetings from Portugal. Hello, Portugal. Uh, sure. Okay. Um. It's coming back. I don't think it's going anywhere. Nokia had its time, and it's time to, to potentially sunset. In fact, I think they got rid of a, a few divisions recently. I'd be interested, sure, if they if they can create a compelling experience, a compelling product, an amazing camera on a device, sure. But is the is the camera enough? You know, or is the software not enough? You know, is the price enough? Is it is it not enough? And there's a lot of variables at play. I tell you what, if Nokia sold a device that was a, a pristine Android experience, uh, respect to the gills with hardware, uh, you know, in a, in a fantastic camera, it would be a compelling alternative. Compelling. Uh, but I don't know if that's their, their plan. Uh, especially if the price is, is a competitive uh, point. Mason Mosh. Mesh? Not sure how to say your last name. This is a, a motif with me. Haven't watched in years. Hey, Mom, look, I'm on TV. But seriously, even as a diehard Apple guy, I respect your open, critical perspective. Thank you. He says, cheers, Chris. Cheers in return. Um, sorry, I'm not drinking a beer. No unboxing juice on my desk tonight. I would do that, but YouTube kind of frowns on that kind of thing. Maybe during the podcast. Could we do that during the podcast? I think it's safe on the podcast. We'll do it on the podcast. That, that is, No, I kind of want to wait. I want to relax into it. I don't want to just be working and then drinking at the same time because then it just gets weird. Um, yeah, you know, I, I just I have no problem calling someone out if I believe they need to be called out. And if they don't like it, it's their problem. If a company doesn't like being called out, well, I'm sorry. This is my position. My position is telling you like I see it. I will tell you what I'm interested in. I will tell you what I'm not interested in. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't because I'm not them. You like them? Great. Like them. But don't put me in their same category. And that's the problem. Is like People say, well, no one else is talking about an issue. It must not be an issue. Well, maybe you should stop to think that maybe they're just not covering it the way they should. Maybe they think it's you know awesome simply because it's got tech in it. I'm here to tell you that's not how it works. I get angry about that. I really do. It just it agitates me to no end. Uh, so, uh, com, uh, ca, uh, com, Cammy Cat 86 a new member of our Discord today, uh, asks, are there any vegan rules to booze? No, actually, beer is vegan. So, no is the answer to that question. The, the reason why I, I, you know, I, 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 you know, may not drink it as much as I might have in the past, it's, it's still fun. Uh, I've been in weight loss mode. So, when you drink alcohol, you don't gain weight because of the alcohol, but your body will effectively burn off that alcohol before it burns off, let's say, your fat. And I wanted to burn off my fat. I've now reached the point where I've, I've lost a lot of, of my fat weight. Maybe not all of it. I may have five pounds or so more to go. 
But, uh, you know, in terms of getting calories in, in terms of balancing that out, uh, I'm now 132 pounds, 132 in, in that range, uh, which is very happy for me. That's the lowest I've weighed in, in a long, 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 long time. And I, I, I say it's, it's because of, you know, a lot of reasons. Vegan, uh, turning vegan, or specifically a whole food plant-based vegan, um, whole food plant-based diet, it did it. And I'm healthier for it, so I'm very, very happy. Uh, Chris, the Anchor app has an update for Android. Good to know. I will, uh, I will grab it. I've only tried it on iOS at, at this point. I haven't, I, even though I've been using the Nexus 6P, even though I do want to use Android on the, the Essential, I'm, I'm holding off really to see how, how I play it on the Pixel and see where it goes from the Pixel, specifically the Pixel 2 or the Pixel XL. I'll, you know I'm real, I'll be really into using it when I'm, when I'm picking up that phone more than the other. So that's how I'll know which one I like more, the Pixel 2 XL or the Pixel XL. Because apart from the screen, they're the same. Um, you know, effectively the same. And I appreciate that from Google, but minus the price. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Jose Pedro Silva says, I'd like to see Chris review or try a Nokia phone. I would too. If you know someone at Nokia, let me know. I don't, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. What else do we got? Uh, would you upgrade to a self-driving car? Ask Cami Cat eighty six. I would. I can't wait. I, I seriously. I, I I I've not talked about this in the longest time, but uh, I'm a huge fan of that kind of automation. Get me out from behind the wheel. I hate driving. I hate drivers. I hate cars. I don't want to own a car. I don't even want to lease a car. I just want to get into something and go. That's it. I don't want to worry about it. I just want to go. I I hate cars. I put up with cars. I, I, I don't like them. See, I I'm telling you, man, I am a horrible geek. I'm not a, a huge fan of hardware. Not necessarily a fan of something si simply because it's tech. I don't like cars. <laughs> I don't fit your mold, man. <laughs> That's what I have to say. It's true, though. It's true. Uh, Mr. Urtaza asks, would you get a Tesla in the future? You know... If, if it's it's a necessary evil, I would consider it. it. I'm not a use case for it because I'm a family man. You know, we've got a child, we've got a, a wife. We're a one-car family at this point. Uh, I would probably float to another electric vehicle when it comes time to come to come time to re-lease a vehicle or newly lease a new, lease a new vehicle. Sorry, I'm tripping over that. Um, what are your thoughts on Tesla as a company? Asks Jamar D in Discord chat. I I like it. I have no problem with it. I like Elon Musk at the helm. I think he's a, fu a futurist. He's a forward thinker. And I wish there were more companies like it. I do. I, I wish there were more companies pushing the envelope like Tesla is. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in solidarity with that. Does it mean he's a perfect individual, a perfect CEO? Absolutely not. I just like, I like where his head's at. At a distance, you know, and, and mind you, I'm not a stockholder or anything like that. I just, I, at a distance, it seems, uh, it seems like a, a very solid option. Uh, so we got, whoa, holy jeebus. Are you, is this, is this for real? No, this can't be for real. This is for real. Th this can't have just happened. It did. I, I can't believe what I'm, are y'all seeing this on the live page? Are y'all seeing this? Hang on, hang on. Are y'all seeing this on the live page right now? Is this just me? This isn't just me, is it? Zeanian, Z-E-A-N-I-O-N, Zeanian, just did a huge super chat, huge super chat, gigantic, he's the MVP of the night here in TLDR, it's going to the Pixel Fund, thank you Zeanian, that definitely goes a long way, you have no idea how expensive that day was, it goes a long way, Pixel Fund, relatively new watcher, I appreciate your candid discussions, Chris, Thank you. And keep in mind, and I will attenuate this because people who are new, I, I will say thank you. I appreciate that. Give me time. Inevitably, I will say something that will upset you. <laughs> it's, it's just a matter of time. Just don't take it personal. I mean, if I if I do, if I have this perspective, it's just an opinion. I can I can be dissuaded. I can be you know shown another way. Um, it's it's never personal to me. Uh, but I appreciate it. I appreciate you following me here. Uh, turning on notifications if you have. Uh, the Chris Perillo YouTube channel is jam packed with other stuff like this stuff. Uh, thank you if you follow there. Uh, Twitter, uh, of course, I'm tweeting there all the time. I've got a lot of YouTube channels, but these are the two primary tech ones. The Star Wars Radar channel, you may not be as interested in. And then Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, uh, where I uh, am currently simulcasting uh, podcasts every day. And then, of course, uh, Twitch is also where you could sub if you do want access to the, uh, the chat behind me. Thank you for the super chat. 
Uh, Discord chat is open as well. I appreciate everybody's support, no matter how they uh, choose to give it, no, no matter how they're able uh, to give it. Wow, that was that threw me off. I don't get thrown off very often, but whew, that was an eye opener. Boy, I, I I almost wish I didn't have some coffee today, cause man, I got my heart going. Whew. Seriously, I did have another sip of coffee today. It was nice. It's not going to be a frequent thing. I think I have to stop like after one sip of an espresso because after that, it's too much. But I, I could I could get by. I think I'd be happy with just one shot of espresso. And if that's too much, maybe I, I have to do it differently. I just, I miss, the, I miss the flavor of coffee so much. Oh, I miss it so much. Screenplayhouse LLC, uh, one of the best commenters I've seen in the longest time, says, Chris, I think Zianian deserves part of the Pixel review credited to him when the time comes. Uh, if I remember, because there's a lot of people who have donated to the Pixel funds. Uh, but the thing about that is, I, I did try to make this a little more official in terms of the people who would want their name in a review. I don't know how I could do that most effectively uh, for everybody. But, um, you know, the way that I think I may do it, I don't, there's no perfect way. There really isn't. Because, unfortunately, there's no system set up for it. Um, I considered setting up a, uh, like, a, a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter where it was just, like, just throw in a buck. Just throw in a buck. And then in the video where I unbox it, we open up, like, a kind of a chat window. And then I'll have Liz, like, populate the names of people as credit for having, you know, brought forward that device. Uh, or device experiences. W would that be interesting to you at all? Um, you know, because I think it's the best way to do it. Like a buck. You know, anything to throw into the Kickstarter for it. Kickstarter, GoFund GoFundMe would probably be the best for that. Don't you think? Because it would be for the set of, of, of the Pixel products. And your name would be in the video. Um, that would be, the I think, the fairest way to do it. Um, I mean, certainly, everything... Everybody that every... Trust me. The resources go back into everything I'm able to do for you. Make no mistake uh because there, there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be covered beyond these simple devices so uh that's just what i was thinking i don't know what to, i don't know what you all think about that uh but if it, if it does happen uh stay tuned I'll, I'll be sharing it in social uh i it seems to me like it's i don't want to seem and i don't think it is i want to seem like look i'm doing this because you want me to look at it. i'm doing it yes because i'm interested but if you're looking to give back and you're looking to be a part of this i I, I would rather get my review units, you know, I'm happy to get review units, but I'd rather get them by way of the community and pay for them outright than having to worry about trying to chase them down because I can't be as... I, let me put it this way. If I had set up a Note 8 uh, uh, GoFundMe, I would have had one by now, likely. And I didn't because I'm like, I, I just don't want to... I don't want to push the envelope too far. And so I, I, I'm very sensitive to everybody because I know... It, inevitably i'd get accused like i oh, just get it because that you you're doing this to you like look you participate if you want to if you don't you don't have to so uh we'll see uh someone asked a good question can we send you devices for a review asks samuel canada i i would say yes you could but i'm not going to accept them if they're open i will not uh, that is something that is a big no-no for me. They would have to be shrink-wrapped, you know, new in the box, and I don't think you're going to go that far, um, because I just don't, I don't, I don't trust devices that are sent to me. Uh, I just don't, uh, I, I, I don't have a specific reason as to why. It's just mm, no, they're not quite toys. Now, if you have a Star Wars toy, like a Star Wars figure or a Lego figure that you want to send me, I'd be happy to showcase it. <laughs> Those I'd be happy to accept. Um, uh, Ethan Simon asks a question in chat. When are you getting the Pixel? Uh, on shipping day, I assume. Whenever it ships. I Seriously, I don't have a, an exact answer because Google's... They're playing footsie with me. They're like, yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to tell you what we're doing with the Pixel right now. Uh, but we got it. If you want it, you're, you're going to have to be a little nicer to us. How much nicer could I be? Really, I mean, people... Seriously, people think I'm biased now. You, All you do is you love Google and you hate Apple. What? Have we met? Like, did you watch me, like, a year ago, two years ago, right? It would have been just the opposite. You hate Google and you love Apple. <sighs> Tiny Wimey. Are you also, uh, was it Wibbly Wobbly as well as Tiny Wimey? Do you only like Lego Star Wars sets or all Lego sets? I love all Lego sets. If, if it's a brick, I love it. If it's a minifig, I love it. Just assume this. Uh, Samuel Can Canada, I sent you a Rubik's Cube mug. Oh, really? I still have it. I can tell you exactly where it's at, too. 
I, I, I know it's downstairs in the awesome room. That's that's what I call it. It's the awesome room. Even though it doesn't have an awesome TV anymore, <laughs> it's kind of an old. It's a 720p HD TV, the first HD TV I've ever owned. Plasma screen, Panasonic. It's amazing. It still works. Not perfect though. We don't spend a lot of time down there right now. Maybe at some point in the future I'll get a chance to review this aw an awesome TV experience, and then I'll have to pay for someone to mount it and get it to look awesome and everything. But until then, uh, what are you gonna do? William Hummel comes in with a super chat. Excited for my pixel to come. Here's to yours too. Now here's an interesting story about w William Hummel. Gather around, everybody. Gather around. I'm going to tell you a story about William Hummel. Uh, the uh, uh, um, the tweet I saw from William basically suggested I'm the one who's kind of nudged him towards the pixel. I would be a little more curious as to that. It, I mean, it doesn't frighten me exactly, but the only thing I want to say is y'all got to make up your own mind. Just just listen to me and watch me and listen to my direction, my my logic. It may not match yours. I have a great amount of cautious optimism with the pixel based on what other people say and their honesty in relation to their pixel and their previous experience with other android devices and their position in the industry as well as what i can see at a distance so i'm arriving at this choice independently the fact that you're arriving at the choice independently is important to me i want you to be an independent thinker absolutely i appreciate when you listen to what i'm saying too uh, but that to me was kind of, it, it took me aback that William took the advice to heart. And, and basically, I think, didn't you have the iPhone, one of the new iPhones too? And you took it back? It, he's getting the Pixel, Pixel 2. Can't believe it. Pez Liz asks a super chat, what minifigs are behind you? Talk about Tix Clocks. Well, I got to do what, she, what she's telling me. It's kind of a subservient Chris here. Uh, these minifigs are effectively like these. Uh, I picked them up at BrickCon, which was an event uh, held in Seattle. It happens every year. I go every year. It's amazing. Uh, Lego sculptures, uh, original works, MOCs, mocks. And, uh, you know, they have tons of, of Lego merch to buy. Each one of these minifigures was just a few bucks. I'm like, I got to get something that I'm going to remember. So I picked up a few uh, unique X-Wing pilot minifigs. One snow speeder pilot, uh, likely a Luke. I don't think that's Dak. It could be Dak. He's kind of screaming right now. Uh, but uh, I just thought it was kind of neat. I just I just got all of them, and uh, you know they'll they'll be added to the collection. Um, huge fan of minifigures. Always have been. Always will be. If you're looking for BrickCon footage, a lot of it was uploaded to our GeekFamilyFun.com patrons. Uh, you will see one public video, a montage that Google Photos made that will go public in the Geek Family Fun YouTube channel. Not everybody's interested in it. That's the reason why I didn't uh, produce it uh, anywhere else. Uh, so. William says, I've watched your videos since I was seven. Seven? Wow. Almost 19 now, and you've inspired me so much. I'd like to support you any way I can. Ah, you know what? The fact that you're still here says everything. I, I, I'm, I'm being just flat out honest. Just, I'm, that's everything to me. You know, I, I've, I've done a lot. I continue to do a lot. You know, as I likely mentioned, Galaxar is happening next weekend, or this weekend, sorry, not next, in just a few days. Here in the Seattle area, I'm doing another event uh, the second uh, Galaxar event, it's a semi-annual event at this point, uh, pop culture collectibles, things that I'm interested in uh, outright and want to you know, kind of have this experience for me and for others as well. So I made it. Uh, the next Creator Advocate Summit, which is likely going to be called Creator Advocate Weekend Workshop, um, is happening likely in November. It's for people who are creators like me. I'm doing original content for them at creatoradvocate.com. So I'm always doing new things for different people. But the fact that you stayed with me for uh, for all this time, you know, it really says it all. I really appreciate it. Oh, ticks clocks. Okay, these darn things. I got on think. I got one. No, I got them all on Think Geek, and they're 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 time pieces. And effectively, it tells the time. They haven't been synchronized for what? Three hundred twenty five. Tw what? Three hundred twenty five bucks? Oh man, I didn't realize they were worth so much. I think they cost me like twenty five, fifty bucks each. So uh, they tell the time, and they're not telling the time right now. They're out of sync. Uh, but it's based on light. So like 0, 2, 3, 3 would be 2.33. And when I turn it off at 1, 2, 3, 4, then they'll all synchronize again. I haven't done it in a while. But they're, all, they're always blinking. They're always telling the time. These things have lasted about 10 years. That's how old they are. Uh, and they work amazingly. I only had to change the capacitor in one of them. But I effectively drilled a hole in the back of the hutch for each one of them. Uh, and then threaded them through and, and plugged them in. Uh, I actually have a spare one in the basement. I'm, I'm going to hold on to it. The uh, creator, I used to email the creator of the Tix Clocks. I made them very popular back in the day. Uh, he was murdered in a random, just like a, a, a random murder in San Francisco years ago. He stopped responding to email and I wondered what happened. And, and a guy I knew at ThinkGeek told me basically he was murdered. So uh, 
yeah, that's that's the ticks clock. I hope someone else comes up with one, cause I they're the best thing I ever did. I it put in the, I mean, I got one not knowing what I was gonna do with it. It fit perfectly within the cubby hole, and then bam, 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 bam. I gotta get five others, and now it's like the Starship Enterprise, it's, or, or the Millennium Falcon, if you will. They're they're iconic. For me, they're iconic. They're, I couldn't I could not exist. Uh, without those ticks clocks, I by and large I ignore them. But it, it's just knowing that they're there. It's just it's comfortable for me, very comfortable for me. Duff's Wildlife asks, in which order is the best way to watch Star Wars? I I did a video on this a few years ago. I can't remember if it's in this channel or the Chris Perillo channel. It may very well be in this channel. Do a search specifically for Star Wars in this channel and the other one. You may find it like which order to watch Star Wars or Star Wars viewing order, and you'll find my answer to the question. The juiciest of Jays is now here in the Discord chat. Thank you for joining either immediately as a patron on patreon.com slash Chris Perillo or as a sub of mine on Twitch. Welcome aboard. I like seeing new people join during these live broadcasts. It's it's nice to see. Uh, the, the chat grows by the hour. Kemi Cat, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was reading uh, Berkeley's question. Uh, Berkeley510 asks... Uh, do you play console games, Chris? Uh, not much. I haven't booted up the PS4 or the Xbox One in, in a long time. Uh, I think the last one I played was like a pinball game or an Atari game, possibly. Uh, Battlefront, I, I hope to play. I hope to stream Battlefront live on Star Wars Radar, most likely at night. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to the Star Wars Radar YouTube channel, Star Wars Radar, you can follow Star Wars Radar on, on Twitter, at Star Wars Radar. Okay, I'm done saying Star Wars Radar. I think you all know. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably most of the console playing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to suck. I will warn you, I'm not a gamer. I'm a I'm a I'm a casual kind of player, more of a retro kind of guy. Uh, I've done retro types of videos before. Uh, they don't necessarily have much traction, but you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick that up again at some point in the uh, in the near future. Um, Timey wimey, wibbly wobbly. I threw in the wibbly wobbly. That's not a part of his name or her name. Uh, what's your favorite set you've ever received? I love the modular set. So much detail. Anything with minifigs. Honestly, you can go back to the Chris Perillo YouTube channel and watch basically the live building, part live building and me building the Death Star with friends. The Death Star, the Lego Death Star. Uh, it, it's awesome. Uh, I loved it. Um, you know, that that to me is just, it was, it was it's there now and I, I just love having it and I, I worry about the day that Jedi gets a hold of it and I'm like... Oh, I will cry. I will cry if that happens. She's she's dismantled the Millennium Falcon. And I said, no going in here without Daddy. This is the Daddy baby room. You have to be with Daddy. That's very, very important. Ah, we have a new person here in Discord chat. Chai L95. And I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that, but welcome aboard. Welcome to Discord. It's a 24-7 chat. It dies a little at night. Not, you know, dead. But, uh, you know, especially when I'm sleeping and when other people may be sleeping, but it's an international community. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, there was a question there about quality uh, in, in video. I don't know. If you're asking if I would ever improve the quality of my video, the answer is yes. But in terms of me doing that outright, the answer is no. I would not anticipate the quality of my video getting any better than it is now. Not because I don't think you deserve more. Not because I don't think you deserve the best. But because I'm not a video producer. It's not how I choose to spend my time. I'm able to do an hour and a half worth of content for you. Every More than that, actually. Two hours of content, maybe-ish, a day for you. Um, because I have the workflow that I do. I'm able to turn it around as quickly as I can because I don't spend a lot of time in editing. I, I get it. It's important. It's valuable. And you want short videos and all that. It's not me, man. It's just not me. So, at one point in the future... What I may like to have, and I tried this with the Patreon campaign, but we just didn't grow. Uh, Patreon just lost support. Uh, the Patreon campaign lost support. Uh, I, I couldn't find a, an editor that could work with the, the style of what we needed. The, the, the videos didn't necessarily do any better than what they did or, you know, when I was producing outright, doing it live to tape. Um, I could do those types of videos. I just don't want to get mired in the complexities of editing and, 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 and shooting those types of videos. It's not me. I'm more raw. Uh, I get how someone might be able to take something that I've done and condense it. I mean, if someone, if I could figure out how someone could take TLDR and condense it into a five-minute video and make it truly TLDR, great. That's awesome. But it's not a focal point for mine, for me, of mine. Um, it can happen. But like I said, I tried to grow the team with Patreon, and ultimately it just it fell flat. 
Uh, and then, you know, of course, I, I took the direction of patrons and, and said, hey, you you, talk, you you let me know what you want me to talk about. And really didn't get a lot of feedback from patrons. So, of course, if you don't tell me what to talk about, I talk about Star Wars. That's a warning to everybody. Uh, that's why you got to keep me uh, on the questions that you want me to answer specifically. Uh, so... Liz was there throughout the transition. She said, that's the key. Even with an editor, people weren't watching any differently. So it was a law of diminishing returns. Um, I'd like to do it, but it's not my focus right now. I'd rather you remember me for me and know me for me. Uh, F43897 asks, this is a super chat. Thank you, F-A, uh, uh, F43897. And I got to give, no give another shout out to uh, Xenian. Uh, why is it so difficult, asks F43A97, for phone manufacturers to make devices that are appealing to the tech enthusiasts or developer? Because that's not a market. Uh, it's an edge case. And, and developers and, 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 and nerds and geeks like you and me, we kind of already know what we want and we go for it. Uh, we go for it outright. Um, you know, we don't, we kind of form an opinion and, and we know what we want and, and, and we can't be dissuaded by anything else. Um, you know, th there have been attempts to make that type of experience, but they're just not commercially viable. Because even if they were commercially viable, only nerds and geeks would want them. But maybe a nerd or a geek wants an iPhone, or maybe they want a Pixel, which again cuts into that very small seg segment. I don't, whatever you do, do not Google that word. Uh, segment of the marketplace. Uh, so I, I, I just, I don't see it as commercially viable. There have been, t oh, I just found a reason to like the essential. Check this out. Check it out. It may have, uh, dude, if this had front firing speakers, this would be the ultimate. Look at it. Look, look. You can stand it on its side. I bet you can even stand it on its top, too. If I balance it just right. Look at that. Dude, try doing that with your phone without a case. Oh, that's that's kind of neat. Good on essential for that. Um, that's why. That's the answer to the question. I, I, I really believe as we as we continue to move forward. You know, cramming different hardware features in there, it's a law of diminishing returns. Uh, you know, they're always going to be jockeying for position. I, I still go back to making a more compelling software experience. Give me better software. Give me new software. Give me software that I can't get anywhere else. Give me a clean, high-performing software experience. Then then you've got my attention. Then I think you'd even have the geek's attention because, the, you know, these, these, these hardcore nerds who are, you know, wowed by specs, even many of them found themselves floating towards a pixel last year. Because even even with its you know outmoded design and it's not as futuristic looking, they still liked it because of the software performance. Are you people listening to me yet? Do you get it yet? Do you understand yet? Don't let it vibrate, says Jamar. That's true. Like, it cracks the screen. Ah. Cat eighty six. Are we allowed to drop links, to Twitch streams, or videos in here if they don't overlap with Chris's? Uh, you, you can, I'd prefer to do that independent of any live video stream or any video, um, you know, because I've certainly done that before. But when it's just, you know, off channel chat, uh, then then I, I'd be fine with it outright. Be if only because I can't validate or verify what a link is in chat outright. And I don't want to broadcast it out. We've, we had issues with that a, a while ago. Um, so let's see here. Tech K Irala says, got notification. Woo. Wait. You just you just now got the notification? That's bad news. Given that we are about fifteen or so minutes from wrapping up, that's a, that's a that's a very late notification. Hopefully, you have it on all the channels too. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna scroll. See, it's funny. Sometimes there are a lot of questions in in one screen view, and then other times I have to scroll a bit. Uh, Diago Ferreira asks, "Do you think Mac OS lost its way in development and innovating?" side compared to windows 10 um yeah i i think it did windows is kind of struggling I itself i'm not saying you know i'm not talking market share i just think in terms of relevance um windows has got to you know claw its way back and i think it's losing a lot of velocity to chrome os and chromebooks uh and, and android quite honestly so Apple doesn't necessarily need to sell more Macs. I don't think they're going to sell more Macs simply by having a better Mac OS experience. I think it's improving steadily. Could it improve faster? Yes. Do I want it to see? Do I want to see it improve faster? Yes, absolutely. Um, will it? I don't know. I don't think Mac OS is necessarily a high priority for for Apple. Um, and honestly, I, I feel that it shouldn't be because uh, I, I don't want them messing it up like they did iOS. Just, just, just to be honest with you. 
Uh, F43A97 comes in with yet another super chat. Thank you very much. Moto X, 2013, had the right idea, but poor implementation. Someone needs to make something akin to Nexus. Simple, well-built, and unlocked. I think I had that one, the Moto X. It was nice. I didn't like the screen, though. It had this kind of hue to it. Was it like a reddish hue to the white? It was really off. I did not like it at all. Uh, but, I mean, as far as an Android experience went, yeah, I liked it. I wish Moto didn't, like, slap too many things on it, and then I wish it got updated on a, a much more frequent basis. But, uh, yeah, it was I, I, it was the same one I remember. You'll have to search for Moto X and Chris Perillo and the other channel to, to see if I did anything on it. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like the idea of Android 1. I, I don't have any, any uh, you know, uh, you know uh, any one Android 1 device I would intend on pursuing though if a gofundme does work for let's say the pixel fund or let's say a note 8 fund i do them separately uh and when i say pixel it would be you know pixel 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 2 pixel 2 xl uh and then a pixel uh pixel book a stretch goal sorry something just went off over there a stretch goal would be to to get me a, a pixel original pixel and an original pixel xl because they're still for sale um, I don't think we're going to make it that far. But, uh, you know, if I create a different GoFundMe for each particular product, I would consider creating a GoFundMe for an Android One series of experiences, like the Android One GoFundMe. And then I choose out of, like, I think, what, what's Android One right now? There's uh, the Moto One, uh, is, is One, the Moto X4, uh, and I think there's just a couple others. They're not really available yet, but I would be able to, to, to keep those funds to the side and then choose an Android One experience. And then if that worked, then I'd be able to apply funds to the next Android One experience. Because I don't think enough people would be clamoring for a specific Android One type of review. But as an Android One in general, like a, a GoFundMe, um, that's that's the way I think uh, we'd have to do it. Vargas IGL uh, does a super chat, says, Chris, for the Pixel Fund. Yay, Pixel Fund. I'm so happy y'all are with me on this. Like, if I was the only one, like, talking about the Pixel, I'd be so worried. Because everyone else is like, no date, no date, no date. Like, ah, there's more than that. I swear there is. Uh, the juiciest of J's. And it, this is true. Do you have to, you, this is, this is absolute flat fact. He is the juiciest. Uh, upgrading from the Pure to the Pixel XL2. Love the experience on the X. Uh, which is fantastic. What I think is going to throw a lot of people off is iPhone 10 is not iPhone X. It's 10. Uh, I'm careful about that. But it's the Pixel XL 2. Are they going to start calling it the Pixel... I'm sorry, the Pixel 2 XL. Are people going to start calling it the Pixel 2 10L because they get confused with the iPhone 10 or are they still going to call it the iPhone X and be wrong? <laughs> oh, man. I hear someone, you, you know, who's like a techie call it the iPhone X and I'm like, dude, they even said 10 on stage. Like that's that's it. It's definitive. iPhone 10. It's it's a Roman numeral. Apple. When are they when are they gonna learn? Uh, F43A97 asks, would it be flippant of me if I posted a longer question through every note with a five dollar super chat? Would you consider reading them all through through every every note? A longer question through every note. I'm not sure if I understand what the question is with a five dollar super chat. Would you consider reading them all? Oh, you mean a link off to an Evernote link? Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. It's just one question per super chat, or maybe a couple. But if I understood your question correctly, uh, Jamar D asks, "Did you see the launch of the new Oculus Go today?" I did. Not interested uh, because I have this thing called motion sickness. I get really kind of barfy anytime uh, you know anything is less than a 90 frames per second or a 90 hertz refresh rate. Um, and to my knowledge, the Oculus Go, while mobile and optimized for uh, the Samsung. What the hell is it called? The Samsung VR experience? Um, can't do it. Like, I, 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 the Pixel I know has got Daydream. Can't do it. Like, it just, I, I physically cannot, do not want, cannot use. So to me, it's, 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 it's well within the realm of gimmicky uh, at this stage. If they brought the screens up to 90 hertz or 90 frames per second, the refresh rate up, uh, I could do it. Then I'd be excited. You'd see me, like, jazzed about it. But I'm not. Now, perhaps uh, Firefox's new project will bring us there within a few years' time, but we're not there yet, specifically with WebVR and the project to increase the frame rate to at least a consistent clean 60 frames per second in their engine. Um, so that, that, that's, that was my feeling about that, but that's, that's how I feel. VR is neat, but it's too expensive and too gimmicky right now, it, it, unless you have the right hardware in the right kind of screen, and I, I don't. 
Chai L95, as another gadget keeps singing to me. Uh, Chris, any plans on getting the new BlackBerry phones? Android ran pretty well on my Priv, Priv, uh, whatever you say that, but I abused the phone too much and had to upgrade. I hear Key One is great, though. Uh, you know, I've seen it at a distance. I've only used one BlackBerry. I think I got sent a review unit. I used it twice. It was like a BlackBerry OS, and I'm like, this is horrible. Like, Android was not good at that time, and BlackBerry sucked compared to Android by comparison. That's how bad it was. So, no, I have zero plans on trying it. I know the battery life sounds amazing in it, which I think is a, a key differentiator for them. Uh, but if I get a review unit, maybe, if I know someone in Canada. Do I know anybody in Canada who knows someone at RIM or BlackBerry or whatever the hell they're calling themselves? Then I'll look at a BlackBerry. Am I going to chase down a review unit? Eh, possibly. Uh, am I going to start a fund for a BlackBerry? I doubt it because I don't think enough people want to see it uh, or would in be interested in uh, any, any kind of review. <clears throat> Uh, Marble Dash says, also, the Galaxy S8 and Note 8 are Daydream compatible. Sure, but they still run at a, a, a paltry 60 frame per second, or 60 hertz. Can't do it, won't do it. Uh, Chris, make sure you try out the Microsoft launcher for your Android phone. It's a beautiful launcher. I've seen it at a distance. I just don't get tied up into Microsoft services. Not as interested. Don't like what they've done with Skype at all. Uh, not that I like Skype to begin with, because honestly, I never liked Skype. Um, you know, I, I just don't use Microsoft stuff as Microsoft needs me to use it. Um, so Pez, uh, Pez Liz does have a friend who works at BlackBerry. She's a technical writer. Well, technically, I'm a writer, so we have that in common. Nah. Timey Wimey comes in with another good question. What's the best cheap technology brand, in your opinion? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Cheap is not usually good. Uh, I, mm, cheap. I don't trust cheap. I don't like cheap. Cheap worries me. Cheap concerns me. If it's cheap, I'm usually hands off. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, if I don't know where it came from, I'm like, uh, I don't know. Cheap technology brand. Hmm. Well, uh, I'll say Amazon. It's a trusted brand. They are cheap. They run like cheap devices. Uh, the software implementation on the hardware is cheap. It's cheap in every way. And, and I think Amazon's fine with that. I just don't necessarily want one beyond a, a, a freestyle or free kindle free play uh for uh jedi as she gets older uh, to play uh, to play with a tablet on her own um she's probably closer to it although i locked down the nexus uh, 6p she can play the star wars app on it she's using her next the neck my nexus 6p as her phone that's yeah, pretty funny the juiciest of oj's or of jay's says star wars was a, a, a Secrets of the Empire VR experience today. Yeah, you know, I'm, I I want one, but man, do, do we know of any affordable VR experience that pushes 90 frames per second? Any one of them. I'm interested in any one of them. Because as far as I know, no. It's just the Vive, the HTC Vive, or the Oculus Rift. I mean, they're getting more affordable, then you, gotta pl you plug them into the super powerful system, and I'm like, uh, not interested. Too clunky. Too, too much for me. As much as I'd love it, you know. PS4? Don't they... Do they have the Star Wars thing? They got Battlefront coming in PS4? Maybe I'll end up going with the PS4 VR experience if it goes at 90 frames per second. Maybe. Uh, have I gotten my hands on the new Star Wars Propel drones yet? They are pretty fun. I'm waiting on that Black Friday sale to get my second one. I I have tried them. They are like hell to handle. Impossible. I, I can't do it. I've, I I crashed them. And, and I can't... Uh, I don't know. I I'm not a fan with the user. I'm not a fan of the user experience. Design is awesome. Package is awesome. The but in terms of like flying, not so awesome with someone who's not necessarily a fan of drones. I don't think they're very usable at all. Uh, Cami Cat asks in Discord chat, "Have you played any Star Wars board game?" Oh, uh, it's been a while, long while. Like like Star Wars Monopoly, I think was the last one. We'll see. CC More seventy four in Discord chat asks. Uh, Battlefront PSVR experience is pretty awesome. Highly recommended. Uh, Jayhawky17 says he has PSVR. Don't think it's 90 frames per second, but you don't have a problem with it. I do. It's not even a question. I have a major problem with it, and I'm worried about that. Um, I, I, I haven't chased it down. I, I haven't looked too far into it. Oh, man. A headache. I get a headache after like five. I get a headache just thinking about getting headaches in VR. Uh, Tony Yoon asks, question 522 for him. Uh, do you have any permanent stains on the palm rust area or touchpad of your MacBook? I currently have a skin is wondering if they're necessary. I do, but they're, they're easily wipeable. I am worried about that in the Pixel Book because it's kind of a plasticky kind of thing, and I don't know if it's going to 
I mean, not that my hands are dirty, but I do wonder if it's going to pick up stains. That is a, uh, it is a concern of mine uh, for, for that. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I don't have, if I'm going to get heavy use and hopefully other, other people run into the issue so that I can mitigate it with a sticker or some kind of, of, of something over it, like a Star Wars skin or some kind of, uh, you know, uh, protector on it uh, that someone will inevitably uh, create, I'm sure. Uh, we're about close to winding down. So I appreciate all the super chats. I appreciate all the subs on Twitch. I appreciate all the patrons. Uh, remember, you can become a patron and join the Discord chat. You can also get TLDR as an audio podcast. If you become a patron on patreon.com slash Chris Perillo, th those are instant bonuses for you. Uh, if you become a sub of mine on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, uh, you'll get access to the Discord chat as well. So one or both, uh, both is fine with me as well. Uh, you can do a, a sub to me on Twitch for free if you have your Amazon Prime connected to your Twitch account. Um, and then you use me as your free sub. The only the only thing is you got to watch out. Every month you have to do it manually. So you'll, you'll get booted from the chat unless you're a regular sub. But if you're a regular sub on Twitch, a non-Amazon Prime sub, you'll you'll stay in there indefinitely so long as you're an active twib, twib Twitch subscriber. And then remember, twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo is where I'm going to be in maybe a half hour or so. I got to eat dinner. I'm getting a little hungry. But go over there. Or turn on notifications over there. I'll be broadcasting the podcast. I've got to eat first, though. I am hungry. Broadcasting the podcast recording. Taking questions live over there. If you're still awake, it's a late night thing for many of you. Uh, I've, I'm still looking for a sweet spot for TLDR Live. I've tried 6 p.m. I may try 5 p.m. again. It just seems that 6 p.m. is the best time slot for TLDR, it seems, in, in, in terms of experimenting with numbers on weekdays. Uh, so see you over on Twitch here in another little while. Sub to me while you're there. Uh, or feel free to. Or do it for free. It's completely up to you. Uh, of course, you should go back and uh, and remember to watch the unboxing that I posted today of the Essential Phone. I'm definitely going to be playing with this a lot over the next uh, day or so uh, to get a better handle on it, to take a, a potentially a few notes, uh, and, and and certainly to, to have fun. To have as much fun as I possibly can with every device that I have at my disposal. Although I can tell you, in looking at the screen now after not having looked at it, I... <laughs> I gotta change the display. I've gotta I've gotta turn that font size back up to normal because that's way too small. The screen resolution I like, but the font size was way too small. Oh, it's a nice screen. Why do my devices keep singing to me? Can anybody tell me? Oh, the essential video is live. It's public. That's awesome. I didn't know. I'm I'm kind of a I'm playing behind the scenes. Uh, any other questions as we begin to wind down? I think everybody left. I think everybody's now sitting on my Twitch profile. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you so soon. Or maybe I should just make this under just under an hour. I think everybody would find it fine with that. I gotta eat. Oh, dang it. Why'd you have to ask another question? Um, some games are 90 frames per second according to Reddit. Wait, for what platform? It's up to game developers to do 90 frames per second. What platform? Uh, Domi asks, is Apple Care worth it? That's a good question, I think, to end on. Um... Yes and no. I I have not picked up Apple Care for a device in a few generations. I will pick up Apple Care for a desktop system. Believe it or not, I won't for a mobile system. And I know that sounds weird, but I, I just feel like there are more moving parts and more components in the desktop system that some things that can go wrong. They get heavier use by and large, and I don't get rid of them as quickly. Uh, Apple Care is generally warranted. Um, I, I'm not in any program or plan, but you know, it's it, it comes down to you and your use case. I've risked it. I've risked it with uh, previous phones and iPads, but I've also been quite fine. I've I've been okay. Uh, uh, you know, everybody's going to be different. Uh, you know, with that, but um, I've been able to save money. I did not pick up the Pixel experience, uh, whatever it is for screen replacement or whatnot. But I'm going to be using a case and, and, and then hopefully getting a screen protector as soon as I can find one or, or get one on a, on a review unit to be able to uh, uh, to be able to you know, use it without fearing that I'm going to drop it and break the screen. That would worry me a great deal. Everybody's got a different take on this, but ultimately it comes down to, well, what's your budget? How much are you going to use a phone? What's the likelihood that you're going to, to damage the phone based on past use? Are you going to use a case? Are you going to use a screen protector? Are you worried that you're not going to be able to hold on to it indefinitely? Do you plan on using it for three years? Do you plan on using it for longer than three years? And you have to factor all of those, uh, you know, uh, variables into the equation before you can come up with an answer that is ultimately Apple Care worth it uh, for you. 
Because for you, it's not necessarily for me. I can't just say yes or no. It's it's not a yes or no question. But it's something that you know I've I've certainly you know thought about. But uh, I've told you why I I, I do and, and why I don't. Uh, I generally don't hold on to iOS devices if I do for longer than a year. I'm probably going to have the iPad Pro for less than a year because I tell you, if I have a good experience on that Pixel Book uh, uh, that comes in. Uh, a solid experience, responsive experience, if it does everything I can do that I would normally do on an iPad, minus app availability uh, outright, which I don't have a lot of, I may be selling that iPad Pro to, to you know, you, you just send it off and, and, and sell it to, to, to anybody who would take it. Now, I got to tell you, the chat, the Discord chat has just disappeared behind me, which tells me it has been an hour. Uh, but uh, the Discord chat will be back during our live stream on Twitch. And I'm also getting... Is that a bomb? I hate when my devices start beeping. I don't know what the hell's going on. All right, I gotta, I gotta go defuse something, everybody. See you in Twitch chat for the podcast recording after I get done eating. Turn on notifications there, here, everywhere. I appreciate your support. I love you, and I appreciate you. At this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. May the force be with you.